I own a lovely cargo bag and it allows me to carry two kids on the back. Once you pick up momentum, I find it's a really easy thing to ride. But the trouble is when you have to suddenly stop, especially on a hill, it can feel hard to get that momentum back. Suddenly you feel the weight, suddenly trying to push it just feels like this huge effort because the momentum has been lost. When it comes to creative work, there's so much value in momentum and focus. When you go all in on one thing, you get in that flow state and you ride the momentum and you're both productive and creating your best work. Focus and momentum are very much interlinked. In order to gain momentum, you need to have focus. And if your focus is spread or torn, then your momentum is lost. So let's have a chat about gaining momentum and focus in your creative work. So first of all, what's flow state? This is when you're so deep into your work that you lose sense of time, that you just, you don't even notice what's going on around you because you're just so focused in on what you're doing. You feel focused, full involvement, you feel energized, you're just getting in such flow that, you know, it's just coming to you. It's just all flowing easily and you're creating really great work. It's a great feeling and we love it when we get in that state. But with so many distractions in our lives these days, but with so many distractions in our lives these days, it feels like it's harder and harder to get into that flow. And as a mother, I know this all too well. There's so many distractions. But something I have found, especially as a mum with constant distractions and kids yelling at me for things, that even short bursts of flow Flow is really valuable. It can be immensely beneficial and it can really propel a project forward. So here's some of my tips and tricks for getting into that flow state and producing your best work and getting really focused. So first of all, batching tasks. So this is where you keep doing the same thing, basically. Like now when I'm recording a video, rather than just recording one, recording several at once. Because obviously I'm in the zone, I'm thinking about being in video mode and I've got my gear out and everything set up. So it's so much easier to just keep going, keep in that flow and keep doing that same task. Think about it with any task you're doing. Start thinking, what are the common tasks I do and how can I bulk them together so I'm doing several at once rather than constantly having to set up for a new task all the time. But how can I, you know, get in that zone and just produce heaps? I do this with blog posts too and writing. You get in that writing zone where it all starts flowing. Have you noticed when you start to write that you're not so in the zone straight away? It takes a while and you're staring at the paper and you're trying to get the ideas, but once you get into the zone, the words start flowing, you start writing more and more. And so you just sort of need to ride that wave. Once you get in there and it's all flowing, why would you stop and then work on something else? It's so much better to just keep going and do a lot of the same thing. Another helpful thing. technique is called the Pomodoro technique. This one's really handy if you're the kind of person that finds it hard to stay focused on your work. So maybe you keep having little trips to the fridge or you find yourself easily picking up your phone and checking it. You find it hard to just stay concentrated. And so this technique is sort of basically putting in the focus time and set breaks so you know that a break's coming up. You don't feel like you're working several hours and oh, I need a break all the time, but rather you're being more structured about it. So usually this is to have 25 minutes of focus time by a five minute break. And there's different ways you can vary it up if you want longer stretches of time too. But this really helps you because you're not like, oh, I don't know when I'm gonna have a break, so I just you know, whenever I feel like a break, I'll just look at something or do, go do this or that. Be like, no, this is my focus time. Okay, now this is my break time. And it really helps you just get in focus and not feel that urge to walk away and, you know, feel that itch where you're just like, can't sit still. The app that I love to use is called the Forest app. This one gives you extra incentive for focus time. So you set the amount of time you wanna stay focused on a project. And then as you're working on it, it grows a tree. Now what's clever about this is if you exit it early, the tree dies and it creates a forest over time. So even the dead trees are planted in your forest. And as you do it more and more, you can earn points to get better and better trees as well. So there's a lot of motivation there. You can even have friends on the app so you can, you know, have accountability and see what each other is doing. And so it's really great for the kind of person that wants that extra motivation and accountability. Another technique that I really love to use is working in sprints. So rather than having these huge goals for the year and it feeling all overwhelming and which one should I work on now and like maybe I should do a bit of this one and a bit of that one, working in sprints is where you could decide, usually for about three months, I find sometimes it's quicker, sometimes a bit longer, but 
generally you're thinking about three months periods of time, this is the project I'm going to focus on. And by splitting up in sprints like that, you're not flitting about from different projects, hoping that by the end of the year you've completed everything, but you're putting all your focus and attention on one particular goal or project. And when you plan that out, you can take the time to really break it down. So think if I want to have this all done within that three months, how am I gonna split this up? What do I need to work on? What are the breakdown goals and tasks to get there? And then it's so much more likely that you're gonna get it done because you've got structure and you've got focus and momentum behind it. Now, something that I used to do back in the day was I would used to have either a video or some music playing. I'd try to have some sort of background noise but the problem is it could sometimes be a bit of a distraction. I wasn't fully focused on my work because I was also at the same time watching things and that's not super productive. So something that I have found in recent years is focus music. So these are things like Brain FM and you can even go on YouTube and you can find like cafe sounds and other, you know, calming music. So whatever mood you're in, depending on the kind of work you're doing, you can find sounds and music that actually help you concentrate rather than be a distraction. So picking something that suits the mood and what you're trying to do at the time and just helps you focus in. If you're the kind of person that feels like they need sort of a sound to help motivate them, a bit like when you go for a run and you want some music that pumps you up and gets you going, when you're focusing, having some music to help you focus is also really helpful and gets you in the zone and helps motivate you. And the final trick is calling in your focus. So if you find that you have to switch to a new task and your head's been so focused on one thing that you're finding it a bit of a struggle to get into the zone for this new project that feels like, oh, I've been so focused in on this and now I've got to do this other thing. A clever trick is calling in the focus. So actually spending a moment just sitting down, close your eyes, breathing and thinking about the new tasks that you've got to do. So you're trying to prep yourself, really prep your mind for what you're about to do so that it doesn't feel like this, oh, I've got to now try and get into the zone for this thing. But you try and help your brain reset and get into a new mode. Other than focusing in on those everyday tasks and projects, there's also that bigger picture momentum in your business. For things to grow and snowball rather than feel like this endless slog like trying to push a cargo bike up a hill, you need some bigger picture momentum behind you. You might feel like you're getting somewhere, but it's rather slow and a hard slog. You want it to feel more like it's flowing really well and easily. Now, I'm not saying I'm an expert in this because sure, I'm juggling kids and family and a lot of things going on, but I've also found that those struggles have helped me to find better ways as well. And to really get that overall momentum, again, you need focus. Now with this big picture momentum, rather than focusing in on those everyday tasks, we're talking about simplifying. To really get that big momentum in your business, simplifying what you're doing will help you focus in on less things so you can really do those things well, start to get a lot of traction, and then you can start to build on that and branch out more once you've got that going. So first of all, focus on one product. Now, if you're selling physical products, I don't necessarily mean only sell one product, but it could be just one range or one type of product. But don't be so diverse. Try and simplify, keep it really simple so that when you're selling to your audience that you really only have one message. There's only one thing that you're really trying to push to them and you're not being like, oh, buy this, but also buy this. But rather you're just focusing in on this is what I have to offer you. Next is focus on one platform. So when it comes to your marketing efforts, sure, you want to be a sort of everywhere. You want to be on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and everything else that is out there. But the thing is, when you're first starting out, if you spread yourself too thin, you'll find that you'll just be rushing around everywhere, trying to build them all up. And you'll only see slow growth because you're trying to spread yourself out everywhere. Especially when you're first starting, it really helps if you just focus on one platform. And even as you grow, it's better to just have one platform that's your primary platform. So sure, you might wanna have a presence everywhere, but have one platform that's your main platform that you put all your effort and energy and focus into. And similarly, have one content channel. So this could be YouTube, a blog, a podcast, Pick one that is your primary one that you put all your focus and attention into. Learn how to do it really well. Give all your effort and energy into that one platform. And then if you wanna be able to share your stuff on multiple platforms, just repurpose it. But make sure that there's a primary platform that you're putting your focus into. Make sure that you're creating content that is absolutely perfect for that platform. 
that you know is going to help you get reach and search using things like SEO all that kind of stuff really learn how to get good at it and then repurpose for other platforms but make sure that your focus is on one platform doing these things will prevent you from spreading yourself too thin and it will give you the momentum and traction that you want finally momentum and focus brings clarity something I've really found is that when I hone in on singular things get really focused on a project that I start to get more clarity because my head is more in the zone of that thing. I'm constantly thinking about it. I'm not working on so many different things, but because my head's really on how can I do this really well, and I'm constantly working on it, doing research for it, you know, really getting really deep into it, that I start to have moments of clarity. Things that I may have been wrestling with when I really focus in on it, I start to become more apparent what I should do. You'd be amazed at how it opens doors, gives you those light bulb moments and propels your business in the right direction. You'll really start to feel like you're making progress. So keep creating and live what you love. And if you want to learn more about branding, graphic design and creativity, then be sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time.